Guys, I'm moving on in our upper limb lectures. We'll be talking about the uh, clavipectoral fissure. Okay? And um, the focus for this lecture, right? Clavipectoral fissure is what we are discussing in this lecture. And the purpose for this lecture is for us to actually discuss the anatomy of the clavipectoral fissure. And um, the clavipectoral fissure, um, I'll be using this sagittal view, right? I'll be using this sagittal segment to actually illustrate the, um, the clavipectoral fissure, okay? That's the best for me. The clavipectoral fissure is a deep layer that extends from the clavicle to the axillary fissure of the floor of the axilla, okay? So, um, if this, this thing in green here is your clavipectoral fissure, okay? So, you can see that it extends from here to here. Upward, the attachment is the what? Clavicle. Then downward, the attachment is the axillar fissure, okay, of the armpit. Then um, following this, we say that it is separated into two sheets in front and behind the subclavius muscle, okay. Then at the lower border of this muscle, it forms a single layer which extends laterally to the border of the pectoralis minor muscle. See, using this image, all right, because this is the anterior view, okay, and all those illustrations cannot be seen from the anterior view. So using this image now, guys, um, you can see that it begins under the clavicle, all right, but it opens up to enclose with what subclavius muscle. Then it now joins again, okay. Then it now opens again to enclose the pectoralis minor muscle, okay. Then it now joins again before it comes to attach at the um, axillary fissure, okay. So at the lower border of the subclavius muscle, it forms a single layer which extends laterally to the border of the pectoralis minor muscle. All right? This is still an anterior view of the um, clavipectoral fissure. Okay? And this is a um, pectoralis minor muscle. This is a clavipectoral fissure. Okay? So that's it. Basically, uh, this fissure has two portions. And the first portion is the coastal coracoid membrane. I always tell you that, guys, that there's a logical way of actually reasoning out anatomy. If you hear coastal coracoid, um, what comes to your mind? Coastal coracoid. Okay, coastal coracoid. Um, that's definitely from the ribs, okay? Because ribs are the coastal bones, okay? Definitely from the ribs to the... Um, coracoid process of the scapula, okay? So definitely, the coastal coracoid um, region should be up here, okay? The coastal coracoid region should be up there. The coracal axillary fissure, all right? That's to tell you that it extends from the coracoid process to the axillary fissure, okay? So this region, this here, okay? So these are the two portions of the clavicle pectoral fissure, okay? This follows that um, uh, the clavipectoral fissure is pierced by the cephalic vein and the lateral pectoral nerve and the branches of the thoracal chromial trunk. Okay, it's pierced by the cephalic vein, the lateral pectoral nerve, and the rest. Okay, it is pierced by the cephalic vein and the lateral pectoral nerve. Okay. And branches of the thoracal acromial um, trunk, okay, or the artery. Okay, so guys, this is an overview of the anatomy of the clavipectoral fascia. Talking about um, the two parts, which are the costal coracoid and the coracal axillary fascia. Okay, so that's it for this. I'll see you guys in the next tour. Bye for now.